Am I the asshole for asking my son and daughter-in-law for a copy of the key to the house they bought? Two weeks ago, my son Ethan, 27, and his wife Jess, 30, bought a small one-story house in the town we live in. After settling down, they invited us for a small party for the occasion. We sat for dinner and talked about the house a bit. Me, my husband, and Jess continued conversing after Ethan excused himself to take an important call. Jess showed me the original key to the house and I asked if she made copies yet and she said no. I said that she should and also give one copy to me as well. She looked at me funny and asked why she should and I explained it's necessary in emergencies. She rudely said, I don't know what kind of emergency would require you having a key to her house. Sure wouldn't be a fire incident. She obviously didn't seem to have any idea that a fire incident wasn't what I meant and I got offended by her sarcasm. I pointed out that it's not just her decision because this is my son's house as well. She smiled trying to be polite and stated that the only ones who contribute towards the house get a copy and that I don't need one anyway. She also assured me that my son will have the same answer for me, basically saying don't bother bringing this up to him because he'll tell you the same thing. But I did and she spoke on his behalf the entire argument repeating what she said over and over. She called me pushy and I called her rude and disrespectful. My husband and I left in a rush and my husband went on about how paranoid and controlling I was. My wife and I have been together for a long time. She's been the homemaker and I the breadwinner. We have three kids together. My wife's been responsible for basically everything that isn't bringing home the paycheck. I help her when I can, but by the time I get home, there isn't much to do. When the kids were younger, they were already in bed and she was waiting for me when I got home. She's balanced our checkbook and decided what goes into what account. She's done all the shopping for groceries, gifts, and home appliances. She has been responsible for taking our children to appointments, friends' houses, and after-school activities. She's been my confessor who I share all my pent-up feelings with and get things off my chest that I wouldn't do with anyone else. And I assume that she does the same with the kids meaning she handles 100% of emotional labor and probably 75% of the housework. The kids don't have to do chores. She got the kids ready for school and put them to bed. She's woken me up, started the shower, made my breakfast, and ironed my suit and laid it out before she ties my tie, hands me my lunch, and kisses me goodbye. She's done this for over 20 years. I guess somewhere along the way, I stopped thanking her since I was so used to it. It wasn't intentional and I genuinely appreciate her, but I just didn't think to express it. About a week ago, she wasn't feeling well and didn't wake up before me, meaning I was basically screwed since I rely on her to get me ready in the morning. It's pathetic, I know, but it's just my routine and has been for decades. I managed to make it work and I was upset with her even though I realized I shouldn't have been. But I wasn't expecting to have to wake up on my own and get ready without her. It's sad, but it's all I know. Due to me expressing my displeasure over her not getting up in time, she has informed me that I'll be on my own for the unforeseeable future. Look, I made a mistake and was wrong for getting upset, but I feel like I do have the right to be angry since I rely on her for that. I got mad at my wife and now she has informed me that she will no longer be getting me ready for work in the morning. Am I the asshole? For some context, about 24 years ago, I was violated by a close friend of mine and got pregnant by the encounter. I was inconsolable for months after the event. To make matters worse, I found out that I was pregnant at about 20 weeks, and where I lived at a time it was illegal to terminate after the first trimester. My husband had really been my rock and my support during that time, and I do not know how it would have ended up if not for him. He said that I could put it up for adoption, or I could keep the child and he would raise it like our other children. I decided to not give it up for adoption. But raising the kid was hard. I'm half Polish and half German, but he is half German and half Russian. We both have pale skin, light hair and blue eyes, as well as being fairly tall. I'm about 178 centimeters or around 5'10", and he's 191 centimeters or about 6'3". However, our daughter Luna is about 160 centimeters or 5'3", has dark hair and a brown complexion like her biological father. I often heard snide remarks about me being an unfaithful wife because it was obvious that she was not my husband's child. It was especially hard for me when Luna was young, because she looked so much like her dad. My husband took care of my daughter most of the time, since I had bad flashbacks whenever I saw her face from when I was violated. As she grew up, it died down a bit, but I would still get these horrible panic attacks when I saw her wearing boys' clothes and short hair. Since I was prone to having panic attacks, Luna ended up being closer to my husband than she was to me. Also, she often ended up getting a little more than her siblings from my husband as some sort of compensation because of me. We never told her that she was the product of a non-consensual act because I was too ashamed and my husband did not want her feeling different from her siblings. I often told her that me and her biological father got into an altercation and never spoke to one another ever again. About two years ago, she got one of those DNA test items and found out she had a relative in the system. Said relative got Luna in touch with her by dad and they started talking despite my protests. He apparently wanted to speak to me about something he wanted to tell me, so Luna attempted to persuade me to speak with him. I made her aware that me and her father shouldn't ever be in the same room together. Now, Luna's getting married to a lovely young man. Some of the COVID restrictions have been lifted, so she's able to have a decent-sized wedding. They were there. 
She got upset and told me that I shouldn't hang on to the past, but I laid it into her that she doesn't know what happened between me and her biological father, so she shouldn't stick her nose where it doesn't belong. Though I feel terrible about what I said and how I said it, and I can't be blamed for her being born or not knowing what happened since I never told her, I still feel as though my wishes should be respected if I say I don't want to be in the same room as someone. I'm now okay with her contacting her father, I just do not want anything to do with him. Also, it's rude to replace your father with another man who you've barely known for two years because of something you couldn't control. Can anyone offer me a perspective that I am not catching? Has anyone ever dealt with this and if so, how? Before I got married to my husband, I actually was very close friends with my offender. We grew up together in a small community and our families were close. Our parents even wanted us to be together. He was always interested in me, but I didn't give him a chance until university. I broke it off with him and started dating my husband, but I never cut him off because we were very close. He invited me over to drink. This was normal for us. And when I started getting a bit tipsy, he violated me. I was very traumatized by the situation and tried to get him jailed, but I couldn't. He had a very good reputation, so everyone believed him, even my own mother, when he said I willingly came over and did it with him. I eventually stopped pursuing the case because of the social pressure, which only got worse when I found out I was pregnant. I eventually left the place with my husband and kids to live somewhere else. After I gave birth, my husband suggested therapy, but I was scared of being judged again, so I decided to bury it and try to forget about it. I just realized now that it was the worst way to go about this, but it's the only way I knew how to honestly. Now on to the update, I decided that I should stop running away and tell her everything. I called her to come over and she did. I first apologized for yelling at her for her suggestion, because in her mind it was an innocent suggestion. I told her that I wasn't angry at her, but at how fast she was willing to replace her father because he was in a wheelchair, and that anger was compounded because she brought up her genetic father. I apologized again for acting childish and not like an adult. She asked me why I'm so against her genetic father being in the same vicinity as I am, and I just told her everything, from our initial friendship to her forced conception. She didn't believe me like some of you predicted, but I can get a copy of the records of the court case and offer them to her if she needed a look. She looked stunned like she wanted to believe me, but couldn't. I apologized for keeping all this from her because I didn't know how to bring it up. She told me she didn't believe me and would confirm with her genetic father, so I told her to take the time she needed to process all this. Later that day, she came again, crying and apologizing for not believing me. I held her and cried and apologized too. It was kind of therapeutic. We had a long chat and I did feel closer to her. When we were done, she said she wanted to take me out to a surprise to help me feel better in a couple of days, which I happily agreed to. I went to see her yesterday in this little restaurant with a patio that had a private pay-for-use area for a maximum of four people due to COVID. She ran up to me and gave me a hug. Then she led me to the patio where her biological father stood. She told me he was here to apologize and start my healing journey. I just wanted to leave, but he grabbed my hand, and all those memories I tried to repress just came back out. I started having a panic attack and lost my balance, to which she tried to help me keep my balance, which worsened everything. I honestly don't remember how I left, but I ended up in my car just sobbing. I called my elder son to pick me up because I was not fit to drive at that moment. Today my daughter called me upset that I ruined her surprise, but I was extremely upset with her. I asked her why she did that when she knows everything that happened between me and him, and she had tried to use the excuse of my healing journey, but I wasn't having it. She admitted that she wanted me to get used to him, because he's gonna be walking her down the aisle along with my husband, and we'll be doing the daddy-daughter dance. I told her that while I loved her and respect her decision to be with him, I am not willing to be anywhere he is. She started complaining about how she wants all her family to be there. Am I wrong?
Am I the asshole for asking my son and daughter-in-law for a copy of the key to the house they bought? Two weeks ago, my son Ethan, 27, and his wife Jess, 30, bought a small one-story house in the town we live in. After settling down, they invited us for a small party for the occasion. We sat for dinner and talked about the house a bit. Me, my husband, and Jess continued conversing after Ethan excused himself to take an important call.